okay, this is my 2018 Ridgeline. Now from the factory, this is the handle that came with it. And you'll see it's got a hole here for backup camera, but there's no provision for locking the tailgate. Um, I really think that's an, an oversight. Honda should have had that when they came out with the generation two. Now I had a first generation Ridgeline and I installed an aftermarket lock, very similar to this one from a company called Pop and Lock. Now they've been making electrically activated locking mechanisms for different pickup truck tailgates for years. And they came out with a version, I think around 2008 or so for the first generation Honda Ridgeline. And I installed one of those, one of these in my first generation Ridgeline. And it works fine, except that the actual, well, the actuator here uh, that actually locks and unlocks the tailgate, these are not great products. Uh, they're not nearly as robust as what the auto manufacturers use. These aftermarket units can be a little finicky. And I found myself more than once unable to open my tailgate. But when I bought my Generation 2 Ridgeline, this was all that was available. So I bought one and installed all the wiring to make it connect to the factory locking system. So when I would lock my doors, it would lock the tailgate. When I'd unlock the doors, it would unlock the tailgate. Now, I know how delicate these things can be, and I didn't want to put this through a lot of wear and tear every time I lock and unlock the truck. So I installed a bypass switch. So this was only active when I turned the switch on. So 99% of the time, I'm locking my cab and unlocking the cab. The tailgate stays in the position it's in. But when I activate that switch, the tailgate would lock and unlock in conjunction with my four doors. That saves a lot of wear and tear on these little delicate actuators. And so I've operated that way for some period of time. A little bit later on, Pop and Lock came out with their own tailgate handle, which you see installed here. It also has a key lock. The advantage of this is I could continue to lock and unlock the tailgate with the actuator, but should the actuator fail, I have a key here that I can use to lock and unlock the tailgate. What I don't like about this design, first of all, when you buy this from Pop and Lock, it only comes in one color, it comes in black. And it's kind of a textured black finish. It sort of matches the bumper. And I didn't like the looks of that. So I had an auto body shop sand this smooth and paint it to match. The other thing I don't like about it is the key. Uh, this is similar to what you might find on a filing cabinet. And more than once, I found that I could not work the lock because the lock had gotten dirty inside. And I would have to open the tailgate up, take the lock cylinder, clean it out good, re-lubricate it with some graphite lube, and then it would work fine. And so, Although this is better, it's still not as robust and durable as a factory solution. Well, finally in 2020, Honda added a locking mechanism which goes inside the tailgate and a handle with an automotive grade lock cylinder. And so when you buy this, you need two parts. There's one part number that comes with the handle already painted to match your truck if you have a 2017, 2018, 2019 Ridgeline. And the other part comes with the locking mechanism or the locking cylinder and the mechanism that goes inside. And so here you have a regular Honda key and you've got a good durable lock here. A big upgrade over this. So today I'm going to be removing the last vestiges of the pop and lock tailgate lock and installing a brand new factory Honda tailgate lock. And so I'll show you that and I'll also show you how to get into the tailgate to do this. Okay, getting the cap and the inside cover off the tailgate is not at all difficult. Uh, you only need a few tools. You'll need a number two Phillips screwdriver bit and a 30 Torx bit. You'll also need a rubber mallet or hammer. Or you could use a, a block of uh, a wood and a regular hammer. There are some clips in here that can break. And so it's a good idea to go ahead and buy 
some of these clips as a spare and have them on hand. I don't remember the exact number, but I want to say there's about 14 clips in here. And uh, the first time I wanted to open one of these, I went ahead and ordered a dozen of these just to have on hand. And I've maybe replaced two or three. Most of the time you can get everything off of here and put it back together and not damage a clip. But it's a good idea to have a spare just in case you need it. And you'll see what these look like in a moment. But I've got spares should I need them. Now the first step is you've got four screws on the cap here, and these are Phillips head, and you'll need to remove those. Okay, the next step is there are four of these fasteners that you need a Torx 30-bit to remove. So we'll take those out. is to remove the cap. Now the way you do this is I'm going to tap on it with a hammer here and it's going to shift over about a quarter to a half of an inch and then I'll be able to pull it off the clips. It goes from the driver's side towards the passenger side. we go. You see it's moved over about a half inch and now that comes off. There are 18 of these white plastic clips which most likely stayed in the tailgate. You need to remove these clips from the tailgate and reinstall them in the cap. Now you'll notice that one side of the clip has a, a ledge or a lip on it. On my truck, all of those face in towards the bed of the truck, and you want to keep them in that orientation. So remember, when we look at the cap, this is the outside part that shows on the outside. This is in towards the bed of the truck. So what we're going to do is remove the cap, the clip, by turning it 45 degrees, and it'll come out of the hole, and then we're going to put it back in with this ledge facing this way. Just work it in that little slot right there. And one tool I forgot to mention, a pair of pliers comes in really handy here. And so we're just going to put that back in place. And so we're going to repeat that process for all of the clips. Turn it 45 degrees, remove it. As long as these two little wings on the side are still intact, then this clip can be reused. We're going to take with this lip facing this direction. And you can do them by hand sometimes, but sometimes the pliers really help. So we're just going to repeat this process for all of these clips. We're going to remove it, inspect it, and reinsert it. Okay, all of our clips have been removed from the tailgate and reinstalled into the cap. So I won't be needing those tools again for a while. And I'll just put the cap up here to get out of the way. Now, now that we have the cap removed, there are three additional Torx 30 screws that need to come out. Okay, now this cap is removed right off of here. The only thing you need to be aware of is there is a slot on this end 
that goes around this cable. So you may have to maneuver it a little bit to clear that cable. There we go. And so now we can get a look inside the tailgate. And that is the latching mechanism. I like to call the steampunk octopus. Now, this portion here, this whole bracket here, all of this you see coming down here, and this, these are all pop and lock parts. This actuator used to be bolted in here and connected here so that it could open and close the locking mechanism, or it could be done by key. This and all of this is coming out to be replaced with the Honda parts. Next, I need to remove the pop and lock tailgate handle. This is the exact same procedure you would use to remove a stock handle if you still have the stock non-locking handle in place. You'll see there's a 10 millimeter bolt here and here. And so I'll remove that. I'll come over here and unclip the backup camera and I'll undo this rod here and all of the handle, the rod, and this back portion of the backup camera will come out with the handle. First thing I'm going to do is unclip this rod. Just move the clip over to the side and that lifts right out. So that's disconnected now from the latching mechanism. I'm going to come over here and disconnect the backup camera. You just press down here on this clip, mash that down and pull, and that comes disconnected. So now that's unhooked. And now I'll just remove the two 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so to recap what we've done so far, this is the handle that came on the truck in 2018 when I bought it. Um, as you can see, there's a hole here for the backup camera, but there is no locking mechanism of any kind. Now these two screws held the backup camera in place on this handle when it was originally installed, and I'm going to need those screws to put the camera in the new handle, so I'm going to take those out. I put my backup camera in this handle when I replaced the factory handle in 2018. Now I'm going to move my backup camera over to this new handle that fits a 2021 or 2022 Honda. So there's the camera. Just going to slip that into place right here. And it's held in with a couple of self-tapping screws. So there we have it. The backup camera is now in the new Honda handle. The next thing to do is to install the lock cylinder. To do that, we're going to install this clip into this slot right here. Then we're going to locate the lock cylinder in place. Like that. And then the screw comes in behind it, you tighten that up. And there we have that. That is now installed. And you'll notice there's a little keyway here. You can only install this one way. So if that fits in that little groove there, you know you've done it correctly.
the long rod that comes in the kit needs to be connected to the handle so when you pull up on the handle it'll open the latch. To install it, the barbed end here goes in this blue connector and you rotate this little clip down into place. Ooh, that thing's snug. All right, that's installed. The next step is to put the handle into the tailgate. Okay, to install the handle, we're gonna push this rod through this hole first, followed by the camera wire through this hole. We've got to work this portion up into the hole on the tailgate and then rock the handle into place. And you'll see there's a couple of clips here that will hold it in while we put the screws in. We will reconnect the backup camera. This goes into this clip or the end of this hole right here. We rotate this clip around. When I pull the handle, we can confirm that that's working. The latch. There we go. Okay, so 85 inch pounds or 7.1 foot pounds. Okay, next we're going to remove this vehicle cable, slide the clip over, and lift the cable out. We're going to remove this vehicle rod. Slide the clip over, pull the rod out. Now we're going to install the new cable snap. You notice this one is longer. Instead of just clipping on the cable cover here, it's going to come all the way back. I guess this is an upgrade. Here. Replace it with the longer purple one that comes in the kit. There we go. Now we reinstall the cable. Okay, you can see the new clip extends over the cable much further than the old one did. Now, I already moved these two bolts to remove the old pop and lock locking mechanism. Now we're going to remove these other two bolts here. Okay, now that we've removed all four of the bolts, we're going to install the locking mechanism. Oops, this way. The narrower part goes at the top of the tailgate. And I believe, yes, that goes underneath that rod. Right there like that. We're going to reinstall the four bolts and we're going to tighten them to 6.9 foot-pounds or 82 inch pounds. All right, now the instructions say to turn the key back to the unlock position. We've got two plastic clips here. We install one here and one here. I'm happy to say these go in much easier than that little purple one did. Okay. Okay. This is where the short rod that comes in the kit gets installed. We're going to put it through there. Lock it in. 
and we're going to install it here and lock it in. So let's turn that key. There we go. So lock position. The handle won't move. Unlock position. Lastly, we're going to reinstall this rod that we took out earlier. Okay, we're going to check now and make sure that the latch works properly. That works. That works. Now I'm going to lock the tailgate. Okay. Now I'm going to check, make sure the backup camera works, and if that checks out, then uh, put everything back together again. Okay, backup camera checks out fine. Let's put everything back together again. First thing we're going to do is put the tailgate cover back in place around the tailgate cable here. And that just drops into place. We're going to reinstall our three Torx bits. I don't know if you can see it right there. And there's a hole in this cover, and these have got to go down into that hole before you snug them up. This one's a little bit out of position here. There we go. Now that goes in all the way. Like I say, that's why I'm not a big fan of tightening things up with power tools. It's just a little too easy to get ahead of yourself and break something. Well, I thought I was recording when I reinstalled the cap, but it turns out I was not. And I'm sorry guys, I'm not taking this apart again just so I can show you how it goes back on, so I'm going to describe it to you. You remember we used a hammer and we hit on this end on the driver's side and pushed it over about a half inch and it came off the clips. And you will recall that we reinstalled all 18 of the clips back into the cap. The way you reinstall the cap is not by sliding it back into position, but by aligning the tabs here. There's a little tab that sticks out of the fiberglass piece with the holes you see here in the tailgate cap where these screws go. You line those up and line up on this end and hold that in place and work your way down until all the tabs from the fiberglass piece are in underneath the holes the screws go in and then you hit on it with a hammer and the clips go back in the holes that they came out of. You do not slide this back on, you tap it back on. You actually don't even hit it that hard, but just work your way down until all the clips go into place and then reinstall your four screws. I apologize, I thought that was recording, turns out it wasn't. And um, I'm sorry, I'm just not gonna take this apart one more time. But it's not that difficult to do. Just make sure you've got everything lined up should be even on the ends and make sure your holes for your screws are lining up with the tabs here and just tap it into place. That's all there is to it.